So here we're going to look at that same function notation and that idea of evaluating versus solving, but now we're going to look at tables and graphs. So this first example here, we have a table, so our x values are negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. And then we have f of x values to line up with those, which are 1, 2, 3, 2, 5, and 2. So what we end up with here are these ordered pairs. So like when x is equal to negative 1, we have f of x equals 1. So really this is giving the relationship like f of negative 1 equals positive 1 and f of 0 equals positive 2. So with all of these x values, you can see these inputs into the function and then their corresponding outputs. So say we want to find f of 1. So this is telling us our x value. So we have an x value equal to positive 1. So I'm going to go to the spot on the table where x equals positive 1 and what's lining up with it um, from the f of x row is 3. So f of 1 is equal to positive 3. f of 4, so this is giving us x equals 4, and we want to find the corresponding value, which is that positive 2. So f of 4 is equal to positive 2. If we want to evaluate f of 6, well, if we look at our x values, we don't have a positive 6, so this value is unknown, or it's undefined is how we could describe it because we haven't gone that far in our table. So f of 6 is undefined. So those are the cases of the idea of evaluating. So if we're plugging in an x value, getting out the y value, so we're just matching up along the table, finding x, and then finding the corresponding f of x. Down here what we have is solving. So solve f of x equals 1. So this one right here that's coming out, this is actually a y value, or it's our f of x value. So what I'm doing is I'm looking along the row for f of x, and this is where we might have multiple spots where we see a positive one, and that's totally okay. Um, what we don't want to happen is, like in that those first examples we did, if we're looking along the x row, all of those x values should be completely unique. There should be no repeats there. If there are repeats, it's not a function. However, when we're looking at f of x, there can be repeats there. That's totally fine. So with that, I'm looking for positive 1. So like I can see there's a positive 1 right here um, in that first column. But then don't stop looking. Keep looking for a value of 1 which there's only this one value which lines up with x equals negative 1. So what I do is solving f of x equals 1, that occurs when x equals negative 1. So we just have one solution there. If I want to solve f of x equals 6, well I'd look along f of x equals, and there's no value of 6 in that row there. So with that, this has no solution. Based on our table, there's no solution to that equation. Um, I'm just going to add one here. As I mentioned, the let's say I wanted to solve f of x equals 2. I just want to look at one where there's a repeat. So if I wanted to solve f of x equals positive 2. So reading across the row here, I have 1. That doesn't work. But then I have f of x equals 2. And then we have f of x equals 3, which we don't want. But then we have f of x equals 2 again, which is fine. f of x equals 5, f of x equals 2 again. So everywhere that 2 is showing up, we have these matching y values, or sorry, x values. We have x equals 0, x equals 2, x equals 4. So what I would do is list those solutions. So solving f of x equals 2 happens when x equals 0, 2, and 4. So that's how we can use a table for solving and evaluating. Let's say we wanted to graph a function. There are a few different ways we can do this. We could use a table. We could use the function itself. We could plot a few points. Um, we could talk about what type of function this is. All sorts of ways of going about it. So if we're making a table, let's do that first. So I'm going to have a table with x values and y values. 
Let's say I go negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2. Those are kind of my go-to values when making a graph. I want to go a little negative, a little positive, and seeing 0 can be really helpful too. So what we're going to do here is plug in these different x values. So like plugging in x equals 2, I'm evaluating 4 times negative 2 minus 2. Negative 8 minus 2, so that's a negative 10. Um, plugging in negative 1, 4 times negative 1 minus 2, so let's see negative 4 minus 2, negative 6. Plugging in 0, so 4 times 0 minus 2, 0 minus 2, so that's a negative 2. Plugging in x equals 1, 4 times 1 minus 2, 4 minus 2 is 2. And then plugging in positive 2, 4 times 2 minus 2, 8 minus 2, so that's going to be a 6. So I can only graph some of these based on the grid that I have here, which is going from negative 5 to positive 5. So we can graph that 0, negative 2. We can graph 1, positive 2. And then we have 2, 6, but that's off the page too. So we're just going to deal with these two points here, which is fine because this is a linear function. So really we only need two points. So I'm just going to connect those and I can stretch it out a little further there on either side. And there's our linear function through those two coordinates. If we wanted to graph this using the function, like I said, this is a linear function. So if I rewrote this as y equals 4x minus 2, so using our y equals mx plus b format, what this would tell me is b is equal to negative 2, so that would give us that coordinate 0, negative 2. And then our slope is positive 4, which I like to write that as a fraction, so that'll actually be 4 over 1. The numerator tells us the change in output, so that's our change in y, so that's how we move up and down. So because this is positive, that would be telling me to move up 4. And then the denominator, that's our change in input, so that's how we move left and right. So because that's positive, that would be telling me to move right 1. So the slope is giving me two directions to follow, so all we need is a starting point. And like with this slope of 4, it's telling me to go up 4, right 1. So if I imagine I'm standing at that 0, negative 2, I'm going to go up 4. So 1, 2, 3, 4, and then right 1, which brings me to that point 1, 2. So that's another way we could get that second coordinate and then just connect the dots. All right, our last piece here. Here we're given a polynomial function. Something we want to take note of is on this left-hand side, at negative 5, negative 3, the circle is open. What that's telling me is that it's undefined there. So even though visually we can see this negative 5, negative 3, really our function isn't occurring there. But what the open circle lets us do is say, well, we're getting infinitely close to it. So like we're at Let's see, just to the right of negative 5, so a negative 4.99999999. <laughs> and then just below negative 3, which would be like a negative 3.00000001. <laughs> that's defined. So being just to the right there and just below there, that's defined. But as soon as we hit negative 5, negative 3, not defined anymore. So that's what our open circle is telling us. And then we have these key coordinates coming through with this polynomial function. And then we're ending at this coordinate 6, 1. And now at 6, 1, you can see it's a solid circle. And what that's telling us is that we're defined there. So we have this coordinate 6, 1. So the open circle will be used when we want to get infinitely close to it but not include it. Solid circle is when it is included. So we're calling this function h of x. So is h of x a function? That's the first thing we need to ask ourselves. Um, so with this, what we want to do is verify that for every input, there's exactly one output. So to do that, we use the vertical line test, which I believe we'll talk about more in this next video. But basically, I want to visualize every possible vertical line, and I should only be crossing the function once. 
So I will guarantee that for every input, there's exactly one output, which we do pass that. And I'll come back to this when we do our next video to kind of go further with it. All right, find h of 2. So this is the case where we know x. So we know x is equal to 2. So on my graph, I'm going to go to x equals 2, and I want to see where my function's landing. And our function is up at positive 1. So on my function, I have this coordinate 2, 1. So if I wanted to evaluate h of 2, that would be equal to positive 1. So x equals 2, y equals 1. Find h of negative 4. So this is where x is equal to negative 4. So I'm going to go out to x equals negative 4 and then see where my function's landing. So we have this coordinate down here of negative 4, negative 5. So if I want to find h of negative 4, that's equal to that output of negative 5. All right, solve h of x equals negative 5. So here we're being given a y value. And what we want to do here, and similar to like with the table, there could be multiple values coming out for this, because what we're doing is solving for x. We want to find all possible x values that satisfy this. So how we want to go about this, and let me just erase my work from those input values, so just to clear it up a bit. What I recommend doing is if we're looking for this h of x equals negative 5, draw a horizontal line at this y equals negative 5. So I'm going to draw a horizontal line as best I can there, and I want to look at all of the intersection points. So there's this intersection point at negative 4, negative 5, and at 0, negative 5. So my solutions are those x-coordinates. We ended up with two spots where we intersected, so x is going to be negative 4, or it could also be 0. Two possibilities there. So if we wanted to solve h of x equals positive 3, then what I'm going to do is draw a horizontal line at y equals positive 3. And I'm going to have one intersection here happening at the coordinate 3, 3. So that means to solve h of x equals 3, we need x equals positive 3. So that's how we can work with functions with tables and graphs.